So um, when when we're working with forward bends, um, I think a lot of you know that um, for you know bending deeply forward can be very difficult for the discs if you're having trouble with the discs in your spine. And um, especially if you have osteopenia or osteoporosis, you wanna be really careful about rounding the thoracic spine in particular. But even if you have a healthy back and you don't have any problems with um, disc issues or you know any vertebral issues, it's really important to um, figure out how to maintain elongation of the spine. So we give our discs some nice healthy space. And if we, if we move correctly, properly with support, with breath, then we can move in lots of different movement patterns. We can deeply bend forward, we can deeply bend back, we can twist, we can do a combination of things. And think about all the ways that you do this when you're driving the car and you turn around to you know, look behind you or you bend down to pick something up and put it over here. So you're twisting and bending and all the things that we naturally do in our body puts a lot of strain on our back if we're not <clears throat> focusing on um, how we are going about moving. So of course, you know, we've all heard, you know, build up strength in your quads, build up strength in your glutes, use your core, all the things, right, that we all know about when it comes to bending forward and standing back up. Um, but I thought this uh, was a little bit, when I learned this, I was, I was a little surprised. So in um, supine symmetrical movements. So for instance, when you're laying on your back and you bring your knees to your chest. So I'm, I'm talking about forward folding now. So when you're on your back and you bring your knees forward, um, you have about 25 kilograms of pressure on the discs. And when you go into a seated cross-legged, well, let me go back up. When you do standing move, movements with your feet hip width apart, and stay in the sagittal plane. Sagittal plane means like this, you know, not going side to side. So that's things like dog pose, uttanasana, forward folds, things like that. Then you increase the pressure on your discs to 100 kilograms. Then things get start to get really challenging. When you're seated and you have um, cross-legged postures and you bend forward or you twist, you have about 140 kilograms of pressure on your discs. And then when you go up to standing and you do asymmetrical forward bends like pars votanasana, this one where you where you know you have one leg forward and one leg back, um, <clears throat> you and uh, you add even more pressure onto your discs, 185 to 275 kilograms of pressure. And then if you add a twist onto that, so either sitting cross-legged with a twist or in standing poses like um, revolved triangle pose and you are asymmetrical and then add a twist to it, you are really pushing that <clears throat> higher level of the kilograms of pressure on your discs. Now, this isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's not something to be scared about, like, uh oh, I don't want all that pressure on my discs. You know, we get stronger by loading our joint spaces and loading our bones and loading our muscles. This is what creates resiliency and strength. But if you have, um, I, I'll, I'll set, Paul, I see your, te your text. Um, if you have troubles with your discs or um, you are feeling vulnerable in any way, this is why I've always talked about the progression of, of forward bending and twisting safest on your back because supine, when you're on your back and, and prone, so belly or back, but when you're horizontal, and this can include being on all fours too, but when you're horizontal, gravity is coming down on your spine like this. So the load bearing is very different than when you're sitting and gravity is coming down on your spine like this. And then if you are asymmetrical in your pelvic support, and you're bending forward and gravity's coming down on you. This, you know, obviously the load just gets bigger and bigger. So there's ways to support yourself in these poses, which to take some of that pressure off and to support yourself when you're adding that pressure on. So, but I just want you to have like an idea in your mind of why um, maybe you don't feel so good when you're bending forward and standing up constantly. And there's ways in our yoga practice because we do these movements a lot of bending forward and standing back up and bending forward and standing back up to make these a little safer for our bodies. So the very first thing you wanna focus on is the elongation of your spine. That, you know, anything that creates space between your vertebrae is gonna make that disc space 
very plump and spacious, so you're not going to compress as much. And always remember when I, you know, I heard this adage a long time ago, and I don't know quite how specifically accurate is it is, but I think it it um, gives you the idea that when you're 20 years old, your discs are 80. 80% water. And when you're 80 years old, your discs are 20% water. Now, you know, that's give and take a little bit. So don't use that as a hard and fast rule. But generally speaking, our discs lose their buoyancy as we age. So we want to do everything that we can to kind of sure things up. And the more we squeeze and release the muscles around our spine and move our spine in all the ways that it moves, we give juice into those disc spaces and help them stay nourished and hydrated. Hydrated. So the worst thing you can do is not move. So don't let the kilograms of pressure scare you into thinking, I'm never going to bend forward again. We want to have full range of motion as much as we can. And this is one of the safest things we can do for our spine is stay supple and mobile, um, but to do it in a safe way. So um, let's go ahead and sit up straight and tall. Okay, so close your eyes for a moment. And think about um, your spine. So, you know, here you are, maybe, I don't know how you're sitting because I can't see you, but if you're flat on the ground, it's very difficult to keep your, lump, your curves in your spine in their proper place. And the more we stay in our neutral curves, the more our discs settle into their natural place. So if you feel like you're rolling back onto your pelvis or your upper back is rounding, get up on some height underneath you. Change the position of your legs so that you have that capacity to feel stable in your pelvis and experiment. Try rolling back and rolling forward and just make sure that you can be in a neutral place where the pelvis feels grounded and the lumbar spine has that nice neutral curve to it. And then from there, elongate upward. And the, the risk of focusing so, you know, burrowing our attention so deeply into somewhere in our body is we can lose the forest, right? We see the tree, but we lose the forest. So have a moment to kind of zoom out and breathe and give yourself over to your breath. And notice how the breath and the spine uh, work in harmony together, that there is some mobility in your vertebrae as you breathe, that we are not glued together. We are free. So as you feel the elongation, don't hold yourself so tightly into um, trying to reach your crown upward into space that you lock. So unlock, yet so that the, the vertebrae feel like they are uh, pearls on a string of pearls with a knot in between that has some mobility to it, that they are not stuck to each other. Allow your shoulders to drop down. Feel yourself come into your breathing. Have a point of entry where you feel yourself relax anywhere, wherever it is in your body. And transmit like a ripple on a pond when you throw a pebble and let that relaxation transmit through your body and especially through your spine. Can you relax where your head sits upon your spine? Can you let it be easy? base of your skull? Do you feel that you are balanced, that it is not so filled with effort to be able to keep your head over your spine? Notice if there's places along your breath, along the inhale, along the pause, along the exhale, in that pause. Is there anywhere that gets choppy or locked up? See if you can let the breath be free. Imagine you have just a slight bit of weight on the crown of your head, you know, like you're carrying 
uh, a book on your head or a bowl of water, something not too heavy where you feel burdened, but enough to give you feedback that you have something to move into and feel the same with your tail. Can you drop your pelvis and give that feedback of the earth or whatever cushion you're sitting on into the bottom of your spine? When you're ready, place your palms together at your heart and bow inward. Offer an intention, what's here today. And then relax the hands and let's come onto your back. All right, so remember the supine plane is so nice for our disc space. So as you come to lie down on your back, which is how I always try to start class because it's gentle, it's easy. We get to awaken the body without a lot of gravitational forces upon us. So as you come down onto your back, see if you can find that your vertebrae have just spread out a little bit. And let's bend our knees and put our feet down onto the ground. Let's start differently than we often do. And let's just do some pelvic rocking. So anterior and posterior tilt the pelvis, where you feel the tailbone lift up, the tip of the tail lift up, and then the tip of the tail drop down. And just let this kind of nourish the mobility of your low back. Feel into your sacrum. Remember, your sacrum is part of your spine. Are you breathing well? All right, and then go ahead and stretch your arms and give yourself some invigoration. So maybe stretch the right side all the way from your fingers to your toes. Stretch the left side all the way from your finger to your toes. And just notice when you do this, you're actually rocking your pelvis um, side to side a little bit in the sense that one hip is hiking up toward your shoulder and the other hip is hiking down away from your shoulder and then switching. And allow this movement to happen. So, you know, just feel into the freedom that comes into your sacrum and your low back from this um, lateral movement of the pelvis. All right, and then relax and let's bring the knees into the chest and feel the low back curve kind of go away a little bit as your low back moves into the earth and just rock a little bit, soothe the spine. And then while you're here, even though our knees are tugged in, can you feel the elongation of the spine? Can you imagine the book on the top of the head, the earth at your tail. And then let's circle the knees maybe two or three times one direction and two or three times another direction. All right, and then <clears throat> once you have a couple of circles each way, let's open the hips up away, your knees up away from each other and back in. So any kind of trajectory of movement that is free for your hips can kind of get into your inner thighs a little bit, your hip joints. All the while seeking the elongation of your spine. So noticing we're not lifting our head and crunching in and let the gra gravity help you to keep that spine long. Right knee into your chest. Give a good squeeze, roll around your feet and let your ankles move. Just wake up the, um, you know, especially if you're, a, if you're a habitual shoe wearer and don't spend a lot of time barefoot, Give your feet some freedom. Feel the elongation of your spine. Stay with the breath. All right, and then switch sides. Left knee and right leg long on the floor. Give a good squeeze. Feel the elongation of the spine. All right, and then release that knee out. Starfish your body. Navel stretches to your edges, open up all your limbs, wiggle fingers and toes. And now come into some flexion, knees in, head comes up, round the spine a little bit. 
Okay, now this is the safest place to round that spine. So especially if you get vulnerable about round spines, this is a good place to do it in. Extend open and then round in. One more time. Extend your body open. Exhale, round your body in. Put your feet onto the ground. Take your hands wherever is comfortable. Feet can go wide to the edges of the mat or stay hip width apart, you choose. And just rock left and right. So now, you know, we've done some hiking of the hips left and right. We've done some um, circling of the knees. We've done some, uh, you know, extension and flexion. And now we're just gonna do a little bit of rotation. Let this be very gentle. Breathe into the body as you just windshield wiper your knees left. So just a great way to warm up the spine before we go into other planes of movement. Roll over onto your side now and come up onto your hands and your knees. All right, so we're still in this horizontal plane of movement, so not a lot of pressure on the vertebrae yet. So let's move into some flexion and extension, feeling into your cat-cow, and notice where does your spine want to be in space? How much is too much? How much is enough? Where is your breath? Can you feel the shoulder blades, the pelvis, the head, all these, uh, your collarbones, all these other bones, your ribs that um, interface with the vertebrae? And then feel free to let things loose. So be free. Try not to have attachment over what movement your spine is doing. Let your body do the thinking instead of your mind and marvel at how you can do a lot of different movements of the spine all at one time. You can be flexing one part, extending another part, rotating, lateral bending. There's so much capacity for movement. It's one of the things that are, is so beautiful about how we move is how much mobility our spines have. All right, let's stretch back to child's pose. Feel that elongation of the spine. Decide whether you want your knees close or far, whether you want your hands reaching outward or not as much, or hands wide. Choose different vectors for your arms and your legs so that you are supported in your breath and in the elongation of your spine. Relax the base of your skull. Let's move over to one side of your mat. And, you know, obviously this is a big feeling in the rib cage and the outer rim of the body. See if you can also feel what it feels like right at your vertebrae. Can you feel the little muscles, the multifidus, that connect one side of your vertebrae, you know, the little bones that stick out on the sides of your vertebrae, one to the next. This, these little tiny muscles, see if you can open them up a little bit, breathe right into the um, attachments of one vertebrae to the next. Okay, and then come back, come over to the other side. Enjoy the lateral bending. So, you know, this is definitely a natural movement pattern of our body. Let's enjoy how it feels. Once again, because we're in a supine position, we're not supine, we're not um, face up, we're, we're prone, but because we're horizontal to gravity, not a lot of pressure on our vertebrae. So it's a great place to open yourself up. Okay, and then come back onto all fours, swish things around one more time, and then let's find our way to dog pose. Once you get up here, try to bend your knees and your elbows a little bit so you feel into that yielding, maybe drop some weight into one hand and one foot and then over to the other side. Try not to ram, your, ram yourself straight. You don't want to have a ramrod effect right away. Give some mobility, give some yielding, and feel the freedom through your spine. So this is a beautiful um, place of extension. We're starting to get into some different planes of gravity. So just see what it feels like to reach the heart. Use the sternum to help the spine. Lift it toward the pelvis. Let your knees bend generously and notice what this does for your vertebrae. And if you're not sure what it does, try straightening your legs all the way and see what happens to your spine. Bend your knees as much as you want and see what happens to your spine. Relax your neck. 
All right, and then walk your feet forward and bend your knees a lot. Feel free to shake, shake out your shoulders, shake out your head, bounce a little bit if you want to. And then keeping the knees bent, come on up to stand. So one of the best things we can learn how to do safely is how to get up and down. So, you know, there's lots of ways. And of course, if your spine feels awesome and healthy and you can support yourself muscularly with a lot of straightness, then by all means. But if you are at all vulnerable, try the sense that you can start to tuck your chin. And the minute you feel your thoracic spine start to round a little bit, bend your knees and let your head stay down as you come all the way toward the floor. Okay, so it's different than if you were standing up and rolling one vertebrae at a time down, which is much harder on the vertebrae. Let the knees bend and then same on the way up, instead of pushing your legs straight and then rolling one vertebrae at a time to come back up, a safer variation is once you're down there with your knees bent, is to kind of drop your pelvis down toward the ground, keep your knees bent and stand up with a straighter spine. So if you're not sure, look at me for a moment. So the chin tucks, the minute the back starts to round, we bend our knees and roll down and keep the butt going down as we bend our knees and come up the same way. So just try that a few times and you can try it slowly, you can try it quickly. You know, we're not always in a place where um, we're paying attention to this. Let's say you drop something on the floor and uh, you go to pick it back up. You know, you're probably not thinking about your biomechanics. So the more you can kind of entrain yourself to bend your knees and get your pelvis down to come back up, um, this is a healthy way of doing it. If you get dizzy, stop going up and down. Just pause for a minute and let's all meet up in standing. So let's enjoy, close your eyes and enjoy the way your spine stacks. Isn't it amazing that we are upright? We are not four-legged, we're two-legged. So let's feel the stacking of our crown over our chest, over our heart. Can you feel your heart over your pelvis? Can you feel the knees soften? And can you feel your pelvis over your feet? So find your center. And you know, if you push your knees back or push your pelvis forward or lock into one hip, we lose all this buoyancy in our spine. So try a couple things. You know, how do you, when you're standing talking to somebody and you get lazy and don't want to be self-supporting any longer, what's your pattern? Do you cross your arms out in front of you and push your pelvis forward? Do you lean into one hip? Do you lock a knee? What you know, what's your pattern? Do you lean into one foot or the other? So just kind of go to your habit and then come back and find Tadasana. Tadasana, you know, we always think of it kind of as just this little moment's pause, but if you can be in Tadasana self-supporting, this is a beautiful place for your vertebrae to rest. So have your knees unlocked, bent knees within the straight legs, soft feet, feel the yielding. Notice if your head is over your pelvis or forward. Notice if your shoulders like to round forward. Notice if you push your chest forward and squeeze your shoulder blades. Where is your tendency? Can you be a little looser, a little softer, a little bit more um, efficiency in your self-support? Now rock forward into your toes and feel your core kick in. And then rock back onto your heels and feel your core kick in. And this is the amount of core that we should require. Nothing like, you know, intense, like sit-ups, just an awareness. So if you feel like your core is not turned on and you're standing a lot, just tip into your toes or tip into your heels to reactivate your core. So now with a little bit of support, take a deep breath, relax your exhales. Feel your self-support. Inhale, reach your arms all the way up to the sky. Exhale, bend those knees, relax the head, and soften into Uttanasana. Even if you want to lift your sit bones and straighten your legs a little bit more, see if you can do this with your pelvis tipped like a bowl of soup tipping forward so you're not rounding the spine 
to get into the hamstrings. So try to lift the sit bones as much as you can now. Go towards straightening your legs a little bit or a lot without rounding your lumbar spine. Keep the sit bones and the tailbone lifting toward the sky. Relax and neutralize your neck. All right, now grab your blocks and come into a half lift. And you can put your blocks on any height you want them to be. And notice when you do this, if you automatically push your knees back and kind of lock, see if you can still have a little bent knee within the straight leg, activate your core just a little bit, ground through your feet and rise up through your sit bones. Lift and widen your sit bones. So we're stretching into the hamstrings without rounding our spine. Feel the crown and tail lengthen. The femur bones pull back away from the shoulders. The knees stay soft. And then exhale and release. Let's step the left foot back, the right foot forward. So here we are in this standing asymmetrical stance which is quite difficult for our spine, but we're putting our hands on blocks, which is helping us stay supported. Feel the length here. So see if you can start to activate your core and the muscles along your spine to help you and stay weight bearing on your hands. So you're not relying on just your back to support your weight. As you start to straighten your leg a little bit, Notice if your low back rounds. We do this a lot to warm up. So pay attention. Do you round your back a lot to do this? What can you do to stay in the neutral lumbar spine? It's okay to have your chin tucked toward your chest as you go back and forth between your bending your knee and straightening ish. So don't feel like the leg has to go all the way straight. We're just moving into opening the hamstrings. What we want to do is have the sit bones high and wide, the neutral lumbar curve as you go back and forth between these two movements. Okay, all right, walk your back foot forward. Inhale, halfway lift, sit bones high, neutral lumbar curve, long spine. Exhale and release that foot back down again. Come into a lunge on the other side. So we're now left foot forward, right foot back and start to bend and straighten the leg. Be very curious about how your back responds to straightening that leg a bit. Don't have a goal that your leg goes straight. Have a goal that your spine stays long. It's okay to tuck the chin. You don't have to be rigid. You just wanna stay elongated, spacious in the discs. How are you breathing? Can you keep the hips square instead of letting your front hip, you know, rock forward and backward? Stay in a neutral plane. All right, let's place the hands down onto the ground. Back to dog pose. How bent do you want your knees? Have you experimented with maybe taking your feet wider to help you have that neutral spine? Experiment with what's best for your body. Unlock the elbows and the knees. Yield into the ground and rebound the heart. Rebound through your hands, through your feet, through your heart. Everything coming up to the pinnacle of your pelvis without having to lock out your joints. Keep the neck soft. Come forward into a plank. Hold yourself steady. So here we are in the nice supine, um, not supine, sorry. Uh, you know, we're in a, we're in plane with gravity. So our spine is supported a bit more than when we're, when we're standing. Now activate your core. See if you can feel that wraparound of your deep abdominal muscles that support and hug against your spine. Find a little bit more of that on your exhales. And on your inhales, let your ribs flare out to the sides. Keep a little core support. Okay, let's put our knees down onto the ground and come onto the ground. When we start to move into some back strengthening, which is so good for our vertebrae, let's do it in a slightly different way. Take your arms back behind you, palms facing the floor. Take a deep breath in and lift your torso just a smidge off the ground. Start to feel into the muscles along your spine. Keep the neck in line with the rest of the head, so don't pull it back or drop it down, and see what your core can do to stabilize you here. So a lot of work along the spine. We're not going very high. Exhale and melt, come back down. Place your hands like cobra pose. 
roll the shoulders back. Now, instead of pushing off our hands, hover your hands, hug your elbows down toward your hips, feel your shoulder blade tips hug toward your lumbar spine, activate all those paraspinal muscles and your core simultaneously. We're not going very high, keep breathing. And then exhale and come back down. Come up onto all fours, swish the spine around, swish, swish, or a circle sway, maybe child's pose, whatever feels good to release some of those paraspinal muscles. And then as you're ready, stretch your right leg straight back behind you. Start to engage your core, wrap things around, reach your left arm out in front of you. Now, if your arm can't, your shoulder can't handle that, the arm can be out to the side or back. Either way, we're finding those paraspinal muscles, those little vertebral muscles, the multifidus that connect one vertebrae to the next to support that space so we're not collapsing. How is your breath? Can you feel your core, your glutes? There's lots of symphony of muscle support here. And then place that hand and knee down onto the ground. Change sides, take the other leg out. So left leg, engage your glutes, right arm, anywhere your right arm needs to be for support. Feel into the core, feel into the breath, feel into those paraspinal muscles along your spine. Traditionally, we have pretty weak spines. We sit so much, right? So use your practice as an opportunity to strengthen the back body in a safe way. So this Horizontal plane to gravity is a great way to work with the paraspinal and core muscles where you're not putting a lot of pressure on your discs as you're building strength. Load bear. Okay. Place the hand down onto the ground and lift yourself all the way up to dog pose. Bend your knees as much as you want. Feel into the reach of your hands off the floor, the reach of your heart toward the hips. Deep breaths here. Exhale, relax your neck. Okay, let's come forward, come into Uttanasana, bend your knees, practice that arm coming up. So drop your pelvis down, push off your feet, and rise up. So look at me for a second. If you come, if you're here in Uttanasana and your legs are really straight and you come up with a straight back, that's going to be really hard on your back. So one of the best things you can do, even if you're in Uttanasana with straight legs, as you come up, bend your knees and drop your pelvis down to come up, to rise up, to yield and push yourself up. Find your breath. Standing in Tadasana again. Deep inhale. Deep exhale. Reach the arms up to the sky, open the chest. Let's just step our left foot back. Our arms are already overhead, and if you don't like them there, make a different choice. So we're not twisting yet, but see what it feels like to support yourself. So do you collapse? Are you a sinker? Um, do you sink into your back hip? Do you sink, sink into your lumbar spine? Do you sink into your, your armpits or your shoulder blades? Give yourself that paraspinal support, the work we just did on all fours. Give yourself that strength. And if you can't have it with your arms up, try bringing your arms down or out. This will give you a different plane to work with. Stand yourself open and let's begin to very gently twist to the side. How are those paraspinal muscles supporting you? Are you, is your core turned on? Can you feel the elongation of your spine? Can you feel that the gravity wants to press your spine down, that wants to you to be compressed? Move against that, resist against that compression. The book on the top of your head, lift into it. Okay, come back to center. Arms wherever you want arms to be. Bring your hands onto the blocks and come into half splits here. Extend the spine, use your glutes in the air strongly. Use your core, feel the crown all the way to your back heel. Reach into that elongation. Find the breath, exhale, place your foot down onto the ground. Halfway lift, this is one of the reasons why I like to use blocks for a halfway lift instead of my hands on my legs. It gives me a more of an opportunity to feel that elongation of my spine. 
It also helps me not lock my knees out. So see what you can do to soften the knees, tip the pelvis, lift the sit bones, widen them, and feel your crown move against that book. Feel your femur bones move away from your shoulders. Unlock the knees. Find your breath. And let's step our right foot back. Come into uh, your bedra I mean, crescent lunge. Okay, so back heels off the ground. Where do you want your arms to be? What vector of movement for your arms in this big, huge plane? You know, think of a snow angel. There's so many places along that plane for you to access. Where is going to give you the paraspinal muscles you're needing? Where is giving you the support of your core? Where do you feel like you are able to elongate out of your pelvis instead of sinking the armpits, sinking the rib cage, sinking the low back, sinking the pelvis? Let everything push off the ground to rise. Yield root to rise. And then when you're ready, come into a gentle twist. Stay grounded with your legs. Feel free to bend the back knee a little bit. Press your foot, front foot into the ground. Give anything to give you the support of feeling the book on the top of your head. Relax the shoulders. Stay inside your breath. And then reach and lengthen again. Hands down onto the blocks. Half splits on this side. So we're asymmetrical in our legs, but we're horizontal with gravity here. So feel that elongation of the spine. Feel the support of the ground. Push into it and rise up. Use your hips, use your glutes, use your core. Support yourself instead of just falling. All right, great. Place your foot down next to the other foot. Bend your knees. Rest in Uttanasana. Find your breath. Drop your pelvis down and rise up to stand. Shake out the hands. Find your breathing. Okay. Grab onto a strap. Okay. Hopefully you have one. Um, you can loop it like I have done, or you can um, unloop it. So I'm going to unloop mine. I like to do this with two hands. So unlooping it allows for that. We're going to come <clears throat> into, uh, so take your right foot in front. Put the strap around the arch of your back foot and the strap is behind. So your front leg is forward of the strap. I have a measly strap here with me today. It's not very long, so I don't have a good grasp, but hopefully you have a nice good yoga strap. And we're gonna hop up on, into Virabhadrasana three. But look at me from the side. Only go, whoops, only go a little bit. So like maybe here, you know. You can, we can start to work to go lower, but start here and see what it feels like to press your foot into the strap and use the feedback of the foot to reach into the crown. Notice if you block, if you block the pose anywhere, if your ribs pop, if your shoulders round, where's your pelvis in space, use all your glutes, both sides to support you. Extend through the spine. Maybe you start to come a little deeper and just go where your body says, I can support myself. I can breathe. Okay. All right, and then unwind that pose. Put the strap in the arch of your right foot now. The left foot is forward. Okay, so we're taking the foot forward of the strap. Lean into that left foot. Reach the right foot back. So we're keeping, we're not opening up the hip. We're keeping the pelvis square. And we're just gently reaching back. So we're not going very far at first, deep into this pose. Ground your feet, one into the floor, one into the strap. Use your glutes, keep the hips square. Notice where you break the line. Do your ribs break the line? Does your neck break the line? Do your shoulders break the line? See if you can keep the line of the elongation. How's the breath? Can you feel the support of your core? Like when we tipped forward into our toes. Can you feel the support of your paraspinal muscles? Like when we were doing bird dog on the floor. Go deeper if your body says I can handle that. Okay. 
So notice how much work your glutes have to do, your back has to do in order to support your spine properly. Put your foot down onto the ground and let go of the strap. Find Tadasana. Inhale, arms up. Let's come down so safely. So tuck your chin round a little bit, but bend your knees so your back doesn't round. Inhale for a halfway lift. Eye bones move back. Exhale. Release. Step back to a plank. Hold yourself steady. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. And put your knees onto the ground. Come all the way to the floor. Inhale to a back bend of your choice. Are you self-supporting or are you using your hands to make your back arch further than it should? Release and come back down. Come up on tall fours. Maybe pick up your feet and swish your feet side to side. Whatever is feeling freeing for your back. And just notice, is your back taking any undue pressure by those last couple of poses? We're about to go into a standing sequence that's the most amount of pressure on your spine. So we want to have all of what we've been working on accessible to us as we come into this. Curl the toes under and lengthen up into dog pose. Bend your knees, feel the reach of the spine. Enjoy all the space in your vertebrae. Notice what it feels like to breathe into the elongation of your spine, to breathe into the yielding where we drop our hands and feet, bend our elbows and knees, and push to lengthen through our spine. All right, let's bring our right foot forward. Get it there however you like to get it, okay? And we're gonna come up, bring your blocks with you so you have some support, and let's come up to stand. So same, when you're coming, come back down. When you're coming up to stand, how do you stand up from this position? Okay, can you bend your knees? Can you feel that sense? Even the back knee can bend, so you can push off your feet to rise up instead of relying on your back to pull yourself into space. Bring your arms into any vector that feels nice. Find your breath. And no matter what your arms started out with, we're gonna reach our arms back, palms facing forward, and tip forward a little bit. Ground two feet. So only go as far as you feel self-supporting, and maybe even back off just a little bit from that, that, um, you know, that extreme point. Open your collarbones, feel the core, feel the paraspinal muscles, Feel the glutes, feel the yielding into the earth, okay? Are you self-supporting? Do you feel like because we're putting added pressure on the discs, can you handle it? Can you support yourself through it? And then rise all the way back up, arms coming to the sky. I'm gonna stack my block one on top of the other. Going higher is one way that you can lessen those pounds of pressure or kilograms of pressure onto your discs when we're coming into an asymmetrical forward fold with a twist. So, um, Pravrita Trikonasana revolves triangle pose. Root into your big toe mound, ground your feet, unlock your knees, reach into space, and then maybe take your arm behind you, maybe out, maybe forward. How do you want to get there? And then place the hands down on, hand, down on the box. Don't fall, okay? So the box are there to support, they're not there for leaning. So we're gently supporting ourselves. Inner thighs spiral back, the sit bones widen. Can you find the neutral lumbar curve? Can you feel the elongation that's supported by the front and back of your body? Root your feet, pull that front hip back. Your hamstring on that front leg should be working, active, not passive. We don't want to go into a passive stretch. It's an active work. Extend the crown so the head is reaching into that book and start to twist open. Only go where you can feel self-supporting. Only go where your breath takes you. Start to twist yourself open. Maybe the hand rises, maybe it doesn't. See what kind of support your legs need. Ground into the earth, reach through the crown. and then come back, two hands onto the block, walk your back foot forward, bend your knees a lot, tip the pelvis, spill the front of your pelvis, and then tuck your pelvis down to rise up. 
check in with your back. Feel that sense of uh, Tadasana. Are you aligned? Your weight of your head over your tail, over your feet. Are your knees soft? Are you able to breathe? Does your back hurt? Okay, so constantly be checking in with your practice to know that you're not going over the edge of what self-support can provide. Listen to your breath, because this is a first, your breath is your canary in the coal mine. You know, if, you, if your breath can't come with you, you know you're going too far. Take your left foot forward, your right foot is back. Let's start with the arms reaching up just so we feel the ribs elongate too. Get everything up and then reach your arms down, palms facing forward, but keep the crown lifting into that book on top of your head and stretch forward. Be so micro movement here. Only go as far forward. Remember that strap into our back foot. Press it into the ground, elongate through your crown. Notice if you're, if you're breaking the line in your low back or your ribs, keep the hips square and reach the hands. Find your breath. Your front hamstring is not in a passive stretch. It's in a very active stretch. So we're flexing and stretching simultaneously. Are you self-supporting? All right, let's rise all the way back up. Reach the arms to the sky, feel that elongation again, and then place your left hand on your hip. Come for, now come forward, the arm overhead to come forward is a lot of uh, weight bearing for the back. So you can start with two hands on your hips and then arrange your blocks accordingly. Adjust your feet. Maybe you need a wider stance, a shorter stance, a longer stance. If you tend to hike your hip out to the side and this is your tendency, what can you do to keep the pelvis aligned with your feet instead of off to the side? Square the hips, inner spiral of the thighs, wide sit bones, bent knees within the straight legs. So we want straight legs, but we want soft knees so you can yield both feet as you yield and push, reach into the crown. Find that elongation and only twist where your breath and self-support can take you. Relax the shoulders, ground into your feet. Maybe the arm comes up, maybe it doesn't. Can you feel that this is more challenging for the discs? Can you feel the extra burden that the asymmetry gives you, that the forward gives you, that the twist gives you? How are you combating that um, that pressure with your own self-support. All right, and then relax. Walk the back foot forward, two hands on blocks, separate your blocks, bend your knees, relax your head, keep your hands on the blocks. Inhale for a halfway lift. Sit bones get wide, soft knees. And then relax. Turn to the long edge of your mat and take your hands either on the floor or onto the blocks or wherever you want them to be with a um, wide-legged stance. Now let's move weight into our left leg. So bend your net left knee and bear weight into that foot and then push off and go to the other side. Just weight bearing from one side to the other and kind of getting your hips to move in a different plane than what we've been doing. Still supporting with the hands. We're not collapsing, we're supporting. So either hands on floor or hands on blocks. How's the breath? Can you relax the base of your skull? All right, now come into a wide-legged stance, bring your elbows onto your knees. Now notice if your back is really rounded. Is your tail tucked under and your spine rounded? Lift your tail, wide sit bones, femur bones heading way back into the hip joints. The spine is growing. The neutral curve in your spine is there. Press your feet into the ground. Find your breath. Place your hands onto your knees, come up a little bit higher. Drop your pelvis down so we're not tucking the tailbone under. We're just dropping our whole pelvis down closer to the ground. Lift up, 
find your breath. Use the work of your legs, ground into your feet. Breathe here. Then stand up straight and tall. Spread your arms. Take a breath. Okay. And then heel toe your feet. Come back to the front of your mat. Pause here for a moment. Maybe you need some moving, some rocking. Find the breath. Inhale, rise. Exhale, knees bend. Relax. I'm looking up to talk to you, but try not to do that. Let your head drop first so your neck is neutral and soft. And then we're going to come all the way down to the ground. Sit on the edge of a blanket or, you know, have a bolster or whatever you like to sit on. We're going to take our right leg out uh, and we're going to cross our left leg over. So here we are, cross-legged, seated twist. Very big pose for the discs of your spine. So a couple ways to back off from this. If you can't find that crown lifting, the neutral curve, the support of the front and back of the body, if these things are difficult for you, unwind the leg. That's the first thing that you can do to make this easier, is to not cross your leg over. The second thing you can do to make it easier, so the full pose, if you look at me, the full pose, we're going to wrap our arm around the elbow, or if you can go deeper, elbow to the outer knee and twist in opposition to our knee. But if you know that your discs don't need some extra support, open your legs up, have your front, your bent leg heel in line with your sit bone, and we're gonna turn and open the twist like this. So both, anytime you're seated, and so choose which way you're gonna go. Anytime you're seated in a twist, this is automatically a lot of pressure on your discs. So we want to move away from, we want to move away from the floor, move against gravity with your spine, breathe, support with the back muscles and the front muscles. So your core and your paraspinal. Decide how deep, this, the deeper is not better. So if you crank, if you have your leg crossed and your elbows crossed over your knee and you're pushing your bone on your bone, this is a lot of torque on your vertebrae and a lot of smushiness for jelly donuts to smush out of your discs. So unwind the pose to a place where you're self-supporting, where you're breathing, where you're not leaning on bones to move the twist. Stay neutral in the pelvis. The sit bones are grounding, the neutral lumbar curve, the breath is your guide. And come out. I'm, I know I'm talking a lot. There's a lot to think about in a posture like this. Um, and always, if you're really struggling with your disc, scrap this entirely and do a twist supine. There's always made ways to modify everything in a class to be more supportive for your back. So if your back is feeling awesome, you can cross your leg over, hook your forearm around your knee or elbow to the outer knee, supporting yourself with your hand behind you, staying on the front edge of your sit bones, staying inside your breath, neutral lumbar curve. If you're backing off, undo the twist or undo the cross of your legs and twist in the opposite direction, open twisting. And if this is still too much for your discs, supine twist on your back, okay? Breathing to whatever is your posture. It does not matter which one you're choosing. You're choosing what's best for your body. Breathe your way in. Try not to push bone on bone to make the twist deeper. All right, and then come out of the posture. Come down onto your back. So notice when you come to a neutral spine, constructive rest, feet on the floor, knees bent, how is your spine? All right, here we are back to where we started in this supine position. We put our back through a lot of paces of deep, um, you know, weight bearing, which is good for us to a point. If we have any trouble, we want to always know how to support. And then if we can't support, how to back off. 
So just check in, breathe, see how your spine is. Now let's restore the sacroiliac joints a little bit by taking a bolster or a block, um, that, you know, not super high underneath our pelvis. Rest in a supported bridge pose for a moment. Finding the breath. All right, now let's bring our knees toward our chest and you can decide to pull that support underneath your pelvis out or keep it there. And you be very gentle. Perhaps you want to keep your knees close. Perhaps you want to move your knees away. Perhaps you want to hold behind your thighs or the tops of your feet. Perhaps not. Just see where um, a little bit of flexion is safe and comfortable for your body. And then relax that back into a constructive rest position. Deep breaths here. And then we're going to lay down for Shavasana. Now, if you know your back is vulnerable, another thing to do is to have support underneath your knees. You can take um, a bolster underneath your knees. You can put blocks with a blanket on top of them. You can put your calves up on a couch. Experiment with different things. Maybe your back feels better when your legs are really wide. Maybe your back feels better when your legs are really close. Maybe you like straight legs, bent knees. Maybe you like to do Shavasana on your side. So come into the restful nature of this pose. See as you settle, as you drop into the earth, if you can get the earth to support you. The more you give yourself to the earth, the more the earth will support you. Melt again inside your breath. Loosen all the spaciousness in your torso. So belly is soft, vertebrae are soft, the head rests heavily, the limbs are heavy. Stay with the breath.
begin to deepen our breathing again. Breathe all the way into your spine. Let's find our way very gently into any kind of movement that is best for you. Eventually finding your way upright to sit. Taking your time, there's no rush to get there. And your body drape as you come onto your side and drape as you use your arms to lift up nice and slowly. Let's place our hands together at our heart. Take a deep breath and let it out. Once again, lifting your crown. And just offer your open heart, send your care and love to another. Namaste. Thank you, everyone.